Hey guys, I'm Riz Grestar, and how about we watch a death battle, Samurai Jack versus Afro Samurai. Of course, make sure to click on the link in the description below to go to the official release first, like, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff, watch that there first, then come back here and we'll watch it together. Just to let everyone know, in a previous take of this intro, I said Samurai Jack versus Samurai Afro. Just thought you would want to know that. So, Samurai Jack versus Afro Samurai. I have not seen either of the shows. So I don't have really anything to say. They're both samurai. I've managed to get that much information. Um, but as far as anything else goes, I really don't know. Like, the, the most that I know about either of them is with Samurai Jack. I know that there are, like, the theories that he's connected um, to Powerpuff Girls, you know? But that's all. That's all that I know. That's all that I have. And I think that's cool because I like the Powerpuff Girls. But, um, really, aside from that, I know, like, nothing about these two characters, so I'm not gonna waste your time here anymore. With that, let's get to watching. And play. This episode is brought to you by Honey, the free shopping honey? tool that automatically finds the best promo codes on the web oh, so you get the best actually know for honey. everything you buy online. Like, I have it, I'm using it right but now. I haven't Look, really I used it. I don't, I don't know. There's no reason not to add Honey to your browser today. It's free, just takes two clicks I mean, to install, and will save you money. Frankly, I agree like with him here. It hasn't really saved me money yet, but I don't buy a lot. Or and go to things I, you know, like, slash battle. I was trying to use, I guess, they, didn't just, they just didn't have available coupons, but hey, it is free from what I know, so why not? Anyway, death battle. Samurai Jack versus Afro Samurai, and go! Among the soldiers of history, the Samurai is one of the most prestigious and dangerous. So let's pit two of the best of them in a fight to the death. Yes. Samurai Jack, the warrior prince lost in time. And Afro oh. Samurai, who's one cold-blooded mother ever. See, the first He's one already more than I knew. Stick. Lost and in time? job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Cool. All right. Interested to see what that animation's Long like. Long ago, in a distant land. Aku, the shape-shifting master of darkness, unleashed in unspeakable evil. Oh no! But a foolish samurai warrior wielding a magic sword stepped forth to oppose me. I, I mean him. <laughs> and that nameless samurai became known as... Jack. Jack! Jack was out! Jack! Jack! Yo, Jack! Jack was out! Jack! 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 Doesn't really okay. strike fear into sure. your enemies. Young Jack was the son of a Japanese emperor who had imprisoned Aku years before. However, upon Aku's return, the emperor and his army were quickly defeated. Oh, well. The last of all hope remained in the hands of his son. Oh, look that how little small thing. he is! <clears throat> well, uh, to prep for beating the snot out of Aku, little Jack traveled the world. He's 75? With the best oh. of the best. Most notably, he learned horseback riding from a sheik, staff fighting in Africa, wrestling from gladiators, axe throwing from a Russian boyar, mounted combat from the Mongols, hmm. martial arts from Shaolin monks, and, and archery from freaking Robin Hood! You know, everyone's favorite talking fuck. Yeah, Ooh, I mean, yeah. Molly. Wrong, Robin. Fair enough. That's your opinion. <laughs> Jack's progress was exceptional. At mm. just eight years old, he defended a whole village from a band of marauders. Oh, good All for him. he could even legally drink the good stuff. 17 years later, he was ready for the final boss. He just needed one more thing. His pajamas. No, no, no. no. His katana. <laughs> katana, pajama, tomato, Alfredo. It's all the same. It's not, but though. Before Jack could put his training to good use, Aku pulled a bitch move and zapped him hundreds of years into the future. Well, <laughs> what a waste. Just like when you spend four sleepless years struggling through college and then find out too late that nobody cares about your English major. <laughs> I thought you graduated oh, from the school of... I'm an English major. Something. Well, you still have to pick a major. Should have chose a more practical one, Wiz, like mine. Anyway, That's even right. though he was trapped in the future, Jack stuck to his mission to get back to the past and take down Aku. And he had the right weapon for the job. Yeah. See, Aku cannot be harmed by conventional means. Thus, okay. a special blade was forged by gods from Norse, Egyptian, and Hindu pantheon. Oh. This mystic sword is nearly unbreakable and absolutely incorruptible. <laughs> and boy, is Jack's katana an extremely effective weapon. It can absorb and redirect energy, including fire. They what about kinetic energy? And slice through nearly any substance, even adamantium. The Wolverine oh. Super Metal? Why is that there? Uh, probably just coincidental naming, but it is shown to be stronger than steel. Okay. Of course it is. So the sword's pretty awesome, but so is Jack. 
He's strong enough to push over this giant pillar, tough oh. enough to survive a fall from orbit, oh. and fast enough to defeat six bounty hunters in the time it took for one drop of water to hit the ground. From where? Drop, all this had to have taken place in about one third of a second. Oh. He's like a ninja samurai. <laughs> ninja Mirai. Actually, Ooh. he is trained in ninjutsu, which probably helped when he was forced to dodge beams of sunlight. For this one in particular, it's clear Jack began dodging after the beam was fired. By examining mm. both Jack and the beam's movement frame by frame, we've concluded his highest reaction speeds must be nearly 70% the speed of light. Damn, that's oh. fast. What can that he does do? seem fast. Next thing you'll tell me, he has the power to fly or something. <laughs> well, Jack can't fly, but he did learn how to jump curb. Uh, yes, oh. that. By strapping a giant boulder on his back, which compared to his height, we can determine to weigh 39 tons, uh -huh, yeah. Jack learned how to leap high enough to clear these trees. Crouching tiger hidden samurai. Okay. These trees are pretty big, and this jungle has a bunch of these ugly baboons running around. And if I were a betting man, which I am, I'd say that this <laughs> of is the African rainforest, where the average tree is about 130 feet tall. Wow, how do Tips you know that? Jack from my basketball team. Guy's got hops. Hmm. We haven't even mentioned the time he survived several exploding missiles with his friend, the Scotsman. <laughs> Why does he look so familiar? Well, I like him. With so much talent, it was only a matter of time until Jack found I, I, his way sense home. Sense of boomstick connection. Kidaku once and for all, but oh, it took a lot longer it. than it probably should have. Fifty years, in fact. Yeah, good thing time travel makes you stop aging for some reason. Oh. But Jack's a good-hearted soul, like a Boy Scout who hasn't discovered Twitter yet. <laughs> He's pretty gullible when it comes to more devious opponents. Also, he continues to prolong his lonely journey over and over just because he frequently puts the needs of others before his own. Still, good the guy Jack. people should watch out for Samurai Jack. <laughs> All right, next we have Afro the Samurai. The stories that surround the two sacred headbands are as many as the men who died in their pursuit. Oh. What's so special about some strips of head cloth? Legend says they were created by the gods, or oh. they can grant the wearer supernatural powers. But in truth, the headbands only bring pain and loss. Oh, no. Such was the case with Afro Samurai. <laughs> Wait. Did his parents really call him Afro? Talk about setting big expectations. Wait, did they? Well, no, okay. it's a nickname, but even if they did, <laughs> that's what I would assume. Seen his dad? I think they knew what to expect. Damn, just look at it. Oh, and hey look, he's got the number one headband. Oh, look Here's at that. Here's how this works. The person who wears the number one headband is said to rule the world. Oh. And the only person who can challenge the number one is whoever possesses the number two. Ah. In contrast, anybody can challenge the owner of the number two for the right to wear that headband, and thus gain the right to challenge the number one. Mm -hmm. So, like, you just work your way up so that only one guy in the world can challenge you? <laughs> so where do I get one of these headbands? Then yeah. no one will mess with me. Actually, the opposite would probably happen which young Afro witnessed firsthand when some freak named Justice showed up with the number two and killed his father right in front of him. Oh, Why well. does this always happen? You know, I always thought parenting was the hardest thing about being a dad, but at this point, I think it's just actually staying alive if your kid's ever gonna do anything great. Or just if. sticking around for them. Despite yeah. knowing that he was effectively creating a future challenger, Justice left Afro alone to mourn his loss. So, of course, Afro swore revenge and started learning swordsmanship under a swordmaster named Swordmaster! Ah! Who the hell is naming these people? <laughs> Through Swordmaster's training of sword mastery, Afro learned the traditional samurai fighting styles of Kenjutsu and Kendo. Kenjutsu is all about how to kill an opponent as fast as possible, while Kendo is more about discipline and being zen and stuff. Uh -huh. Naturally, Afro preferred the more kick-ass one. I feel like right. Boomstick Sword does Master's too. Swordmaster's goal was to refine Afro's body and mind, instilling upon him a sense of honor, or Bushido. But that didn't quite mesh with Afro's thirst for vengeance. So when he found out that Swordmaster had the number two headband all along, he knew what he had to do. Oh. And now he could take down the guy who killed his dad. Yo, okay. Alongside his new friend slash burden, Ninja Ninja. Oh, come the f*** on. Really? <laughs> Where'd this guy come from? 
Now, don't we look like shit? How you been, man? Well, it's not entirely clear. He's there, but at the same time, not there. Ninja Ninja oh. is believed to be the guardian of the number two headband, but all he ever really does is talk, talk, and talk some more. Mm. You got arrows and grenades and shit! You ain't got no chance, dude! Though it's also possible Ninja Ninja is simply a figment of Afro's mind, brought about by psychological stress. You Maybe. have an imaginary friend. Aren't you a little old for that? Not for Al Gundy! He's a gun! Who also oh. talks to me! Oh. He tells me to do stuff. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> anyway, to be honest, gonna move on. Afro Egg Samurai is a bit misleading. He's actually more akin to a Ronin, a samurai with no master. Well, because he and killed so, his master. With his swordsmanship perfected, Afro wandered the world searching for justice, carrying an arsenal fit for revenge. Including his father's sword. This super long blade has lasted through decades of battle without much issue. Mm -hmm. Perfect for kicking some ass. He also has a steel comb, which can be a surprisingly effective offensive and defensive tool. And since really? he doesn't care about that honor BS, he's not afraid to play dirty by attacking with his sandals. But while <laughs> on the road to justice, Afro's number two headband attracted all manner of dangerous enemies. Luckily, he's more than capable of dealing with each and every one of them. He's strong enough to cut other swords in half, throw his sheath through another guy's throat, and oh. even tear off metal arms. Pretty impressive, as many yeah. modern metals have tensile strength as high as 80,000 pounds per square inch. Right, yeah. Afro is fast enough to cut bullets out of thin air, and even a laser beam. I should note that it's not a plasma-based beam. It bounces off reflective surfaces, doesn't explode upon contact, and it's literally labeled a laser. <laughs> this means Afro blocked a beam that moved as fast as light. Huh. More than 670 million miles per hour. Get this, that laser beam came from a robot version of Afro. Talk about metal! This Afro hmm. droid could easily smash up a car, and our boy Afro just tore it apart! He survived getting hit by rockets, including this RPG that fragmented a giant cliff face! A RPG in a backpack? <laughs> I think I smell math coming. <laughs> this tree nearby is most likely a Japanese mountain ash. Which can right, sometimes yeah. grow as high as 30 feet. Duh. With that in mind, we compared its height to the fragmentation created by the explosion and compared the resulting surface area to the sheer force for granite. With this, we deduce the RPG's highest possible explosive yield must be around 72 tons of TNT. Damn, what kind of mega rocket launcher are these guys packing? And where do I so get So he it? was there and, and just he stood took in it? his way, and Afro didn't get through them all unscathed. But by the end, he cut down justice, took his revenge in hand, and proved to the world that Afro Samurai is number one. I guess Why that's it, huh? Why you gotta kill all my men? Why you gotta kill me? Nothing personal. It's just revenge. All right, well that that's it. All right, the combatants are set. Let's end. Y'all ready for this? For well, I hope you're ready first, first for a commercial. I'm. Just, well, I mean, we're gonna skip it. But like, it's here. Anyway, sorry, skip. It's time for a death battle and pause. All right, first I want to say that that Blue Apron commercial was better than their previous ones. I think they took it more seriously, but it was also still fun just to have Wiz and Boomstick actually talking about the food and everything, than just have the, I don't know, the music joke kind of stuff. Anyway, I still skipped it because I wanted to avoid copyright music, but now let's talk about this and prediction and stuff. So again, I hate jumping right into it. Like, I basically, I think, mm, I feel like Afro is gonna win. I, mm, you know, but I, I, wanna, I wanna try to figure out why I think that first, because I was wrong the last two times, and last time I jumped right into something, and I don't wanna make a mistake. I just feel like Afro is going to win. Part of it, admittedly, is because Afro Samurai is an anime. Well, Samurai Jack is a cartoon, and like, well, you might get seemingly better feats from cartoons, or maybe actually better feats from cartoons, given the cartoon kind of physics that go into it, so you get wacky stuff, you know? But you can get that in anime too, and it just seems like from what we were shown, that there was more of that in Afro Samurai than in Samurai Jack. To me, it seemed like... So, I will say that Samurai Jack seems more versatile. I don't want to try to just prove that I'm right in that Afro Samurai is going to win. I want to try to actually figure this out. So I guess I'll just try to talk about this. Samurai Jack seems more versatile. Afro Samurai, from what I saw, really only had, like, he has his katana and the sheath and a comb and cigarettes. Were cigarettes actually a thing? It said, like, in the list, but I didn't, I don't remember hearing how they were actually used. 
in a fighting kind of situation. Um, so it's not, it's much more limited. It's just like for fighting or for parrying is kind of what I can gather based upon those things. Um, whereas, you know, like Samurai Jack just has experience with different kinds of weapons and different kinds of combat and things like that. Um, Samurai Jack has also been alive longer and given that he's apparently gone through time, it seems like he might have some more versatile encounters. You know, or varied kind of enemies he's gone up against. Um, but were those enemies actually like powerful? Were they actually like real threats? I don't know. Whereas Afro Samurai, he has a bunch of trained assassins and samurai like trying to kill him, like targeting him because he had the second number two headband or whatever. So I don't know about that one. I feel like he would have to be on his guard a lot more than Samurai Jack would have to be. So I don't know who's better as a, like I want to say that Afro Samurai seems like a better swordsman. Like he he's proven himself more. Like he's been up against harder things and was able to get through them. And then it seems like as far as the speed feats go, it seems like I'd want to say that Afro was better in that regard too. Like the things that I'm thinking of was Samurai Jack dodging that beam of light. And he did dodge it and it said he would have to go like 70% of the speed of light or whatever, right? But then you have Afro Samurai deflecting the laser beam, which to me, like, isn't that also speed of light? But like even better because not only did he, he didn't just dodge it, he actually deflected it. So he was able to react quickly enough to actually move like a, a thin piece of metal, like in front of the beam and deflect it in that manner. And it seems to me like that would take more. I would also imagine that Samurai Jack, it seems like he would have more of like, oh, this is, like, he's already seen it happen multiple times, and so he could kind of predict, like, it's gonna come, and he wouldn't necessarily be reacting at the perfect moment, but maybe instead kind of just, like, logicking it through, which is fine, but yeah, I don't know. And then trying to figure out how they would fare against a new enemy. The only thing that I can remember, unfortunately, is on Afro Samurai's part, or Afro Samurai's part, just correcting, like, enunciation. Um was that he was just, he was able to like, memorize or something, Robo Afro Samurai's moves or something like really quickly. I, thought, I think it said a few minutes, which I guess actually that's not how long fights usually last. Maybe it wouldn't last that long and it wouldn't help it. But yeah, and then, was it, crap, was it Afro who fell from orbit and survived? No, I think it was Samurai Jack who fell from orbit and survived. But, but Afro Samurai survived those like huge missile impacts if we're talking about the tree and the fragmentation and all of that uh, son of a gun the issue is like I'm I'm kind of I'm not confident and I'm kind of losing confidence as I'm talking but at the same time I still don't think I don't know if I have reasons to believe that Samurai Jack is going to win it says the sword is nearly indestructible and that his sword can cut through like any metal Afro Samurai Sword is also metal, and he's, he's, it's survived a long time, but is that just because he hasn't gone up against Samurai Jack's kind of sword? You know? And like, it said that Afro Samurai is strong enough to cut through both, you know, someone's sword and their body, you know, like in one swing, but is that to say that Samurai Jack is not also that powerful? I don't know. But because I feel like I'm just going in circles, I just want to make a decision, so if I get it wrong three times in a row, I guess that's alright. But Afro Samurai is going to win this one. Right? Right? Maybe? I can't figure out anything else. Nothing else is really coming to mind right now. Nothing else is really coming to mind right now. Play. I hope Afro wins. <laughs> now, like, if I'm being fair, I like Samurai Jack better as a character. And I think as a show, even though I haven't seen either of them, just from what I saw here, I like him better and I like his show better. I just felt like Afro Samurai was superior in terms of combat here. Your sword smells of blood. So does yours. Fight! Interesting. <laughs> the 
This fighting style, or the animation rather, is cool though. I like it. Because it is just like a fight you'd watch at a cartoon. That's, that's cool. Was that unintentional on your part? I thought you were purposely cutting those. Well, that's fine, because Jack can, yeah, jump and stuff. Huh. You jump good. <laughs> oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> I, I'm kind of rooting for Jack. Like, I want, I want Afro to win because I want to be right. But I like Jack better than <laughs> rooting for him in that regard. And like, if I were to say without swords, like I think Jack would win because he just again has that versatility. But hopefully, with swords, Afro has it. Well, that looked bad. Yeah, you lost an arm, but what about Afro? Yeah, man, you lost both arms. That's like twice as bad as what happened to you, man. Yeah? I gotta hear how though. Cause I'm not doubting this. I just I just couldn't piece anything together as to why Jack would like necessarily win. So like is he gonna get his arm back or I don't know. Afro was an exceptional warrior, and his skills would absolutely dominate most sword fights. However, Jack has had a lot of experience with opponents who fight dirty, and Afro could not stand up to his physical superiority. Yeah, Afro never showed strength like how Jack lifted that 39-ton boulder. Jack could react oh, to 70% the speed of light. Afro did block that light speed laser beam, but based on the distance between him and the Afro droid, he only needed to react around 21% the speed of light to do Oh, this. man, that was like my biggest thing for him. Speeds, but not even half as quick as I Jack. thought that that was a lot also, better than Jack's, as you all mega -sized heard. RPG explosion. Don't forget how Jack survived a fall from orbit. While it does seem the spacesuit was responsible for Jack surviving re-entry, it certainly can't be held solely accountable for the final impact. Starting his descent from the Kármán line, or the boundary between Earth's atmosphere and space, mm. Jack covered a distance of 62 miles in just under 7 seconds, moving well over terminal velocity. Thanks to being propelled by exploding space beam! Which means his top velocity was approximately 37,000 miles per hour. Adding right. the spacesuit's weight to his own, this means his impact force must have equaled about 19 megatons of force. That's Way a lot of more force. than anything Afro survived. That's a lot, he yeah. He just got up and walked away. Badass. In the end, Jack was just too fast, too strong, too tough, and too well trained for <laughs> Afro to uh, handle. The winner is Samurai Jack. Claps for Samurai Jack. And now they're going to talk at us. Thanks for watching. If you guys want exclusive commentary on the episode, just click that little box right over there. And if you want the battle music from this episode, you can get it by clicking the link in the description. And then the next time on Death Battle. Oh. Wait, Carnage and who's the other one? Lucy. I haven't seen Elfin Light, so I don't know who Lucy is. I know vaguely of Carnage. Alright, so let's talk about this death battle then. My biggest justification was that... Well, one, I will say first that the last death battle with Jean in Surviving Reentry, that threw me off because they didn't seem to make too big a deal of that, so I'm like, maybe it wasn't such a big deal that Jack survived it. However, even... <laughs> my bigger thing, though, is that my justification was I thought that the laser thing made Afro a lot faster. And that's what I was riding on, because I figured even if Samurai Jack was like physically tougher, even if he could survive more kind of blunt trauma like that, I figure if you don't move fast enough and someone cuts you in half, there's only so much that your just like blunt durability can do for that. You know what I mean? Um, and so in that sense, if the numbers had been reversed and Samurai Jack, or Samurai, sorry, Afro Samurai's had been like 70% speed of light and Jack's had been the 21%. 
you know, then I, I think it's the speed thing that would have mostly done it, because they're dealing with swords here. I do totally understand that, you know, if they didn't have their swords, then Jack would have the upper hand, because as I pointed out too, he, d he is the one with the versatility. Um, but I would think that in a fight, that probably wouldn't come into play. I feel like the majority of the time, that wouldn't come into play. I'm not questioning the results here. Um, this is just me saying again, if the speed of light, or if the speed differences were, or speed numbers, whatever, were switched, I think that Afro would have won. Like, I think that's the biggest limiting thing. And that's just the biggest thing that I can say as to why I got it wrong. Um, did I severely underestimate surviving re-entry? Absolutely, I did. I really did. <laughs> um, but I do think that if Afro Samurai had been faster, I think he would have won because it's just... If you're cut, you're cut. There's only so much you could do with that. But at the same time, now it, now that I know that Jack is 70% and, you know, Afro is 21, the, the fight probably should have ended a lot sooner, you know, in Jack's favor. And I, I don't blame them for, like, making it as long as they did. Not saying it was even long, um, but, like, it's more entertaining when it's drawn out like this. But if we're just thinking about it realistically, if he is that much faster, yeah, he probably should have been able to win a lot sooner. So... Credit where credit's due. <laughs> Speaking of credit where credit's due, uh, the animation I thought was really cool. Um, definitely a departure from what we're used to seeing in Death Battle. Um, so it was a risk that they took, and um, I think that it paid off. Like, I think that it was really cool. Um, it wasn't like the flashiest of animations. Um, it certainly isn't my favorite Death Battle because of that. Um, it doesn't look necessarily the best, but I think that it fit really well for the characters they were presenting. I think that it fit well within the narrative they were trying to tell, um, and it looked good. So. Wanted to wanted to say that it was it was a well done animation. Um, as far as the analyses go, I I can't really fault it for anything. I don't think they were hiding stuff necessarily. I mean they they didn't reveal numbers, but I'm fine with them not revealing numbers. You know I understand that if you say like if they had told me 70% 21% oh well I would have guessed Samurai Jack. Um, you know, things like that. I'm fine with that. It's just I don't want them to trick people. I don't want them to give misleading information necessarily, you know? Um, and the, the most misleading thing I can think about this is just them pointing out that the distance covered between the laser from, like, the Robo Dude and Afro Samurai, uh, was large, you know? I mean, and I wouldn't even think that, like, over that distance... Because it wasn't that big of a distance. I wouldn't think that something going at the speed of light would be that, uh, I don't think it would matter that much. You know, it's the speed of light. That's pretty fast, <laughs> but I guess it did matter. I mean, of course, any distance is going to matter when you're talking about speed, considering they're kind of directly related. But, yeah. That was, like I said, I think the most misleading thing. And I wouldn't even say it's misleading. I would just say that I did not think about it properly. Um... You know, I, I don't necessarily disagree with the stuff that I said before relating to, like, I feel like Jack could have predicted his better than Afro could have, but I guess in the same way, maybe that wasn't the first time Robodude had used a laser like that. Maybe he had to charge up and there was, like, a high-pitched whir or something before he shot the laser out. Um, but, you know, all I know is that Jack had seen the light thing happen a few times and it seems like he was looking up at the source so it didn't seem necessarily like a reaction, but so much as like, I know what's going to happen. Maybe I should kind of preemptively jump. We can't prove that he didn't do that. I'm not trying to say that Afra should have won for the record. <laughs> I'm just saying, here are some of my misunderstandings or where I found them and that kind of thing. It definitely is disappointing to be wrong on a death battle uh, three times in a row. Um, especially because I know some people in the comments of the last one were like, hey, you should really get the next one. It's obvious. Now, I know that people say that the results are obvious every time. It doesn't mean it doesn't always hurt. <laughs> but, oh well. You know, like, I thought that Afro was going to win. I stuck with my gut. I did try. I did genuinely try to, you know, because I wanted to be careful. I did genuinely try to figure out why exactly I thought Afro was going to win. And I can still see the reasons that I thought why. But... Again, the biggest thing hinged on the fact that I thought that he was a lot faster, or could react a lot faster, at the very least, than Jack. And he was not. I had I had those reversed. And that was the biggest thing that I had going for him. Most everything else I had put in Jack's favor. So, oh well, I suppose. Anyway, let me know what you guys thought about this death battle in the comments below. Whether you liked it, whether you disliked it, what you thought about this or that, etc. So on and so forth. And as for the next time, I will watch that next weekend um so 
Just making that clear again, um, I'm gonna watch the next death battle next weekend. So, Carnage vs. Lucy, um, I'm going to be watching that a week from uh, today when this video is published. Um, so look at the published date of this video, um, add seven days to it, and if that's a Saturday, you add it correctly, and that's when I'm going to be uploading my reaction to Carnage vs. Lucy. So in a week from now, if you want to see me react to Carnage vs. Lucy, um, come back to my channel and I'll have my reaction to that death battle uploaded. Um, just for the people who keep asking when I'm going to have the next one up. Um, so yeah. Anyway, with that, we're calling it here. Cue outro, go!